All right, let's talk about some of the most profitable items you can craft. If you think I'm about to say legendary weapons, you're right, but not really. See, crafting a generation 3 legendary became nearly as cheap as crafting generation 1 legendaries. I would argue they even feel cheaper to craft if you don't mind farming for the most costly ingredients. There is a big problem with crafting legendary weapons for profit for most people though. Not a lot of players will have about 1.3k gold of materials simply lying around. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't care as much about my videos. Selling a legendary weapon is also a bit of a nightmarish scenario. Either you have to trust someone so much that you're willing to mail the item to them in exchange for gold and materials afterwards, or you need to pay a listing fee on the trading post which will easily set you back 300 gold. So how do we solve this? Well, by not crafting legendaries, but their precursors. More specifically, generation 3 precursors, as generation 1 precursors will kill your bank account faster than an elementalist takes to get into downstate. All gen 3 precursors will cost you around 70 gold in materials to craft and will fetch you anywhere from 150 to 170 gold on the trading post. This won't change anytime soon, unless someone literally starts dumping precursors, but then I'm just gonna make a video on how to cheaply craft gen 3s instead. Jokes aside, the reason I believe they will remain profitable is rather simple. Almost all profitable recipes that have withstood the test of time have one thing in common. They require account bond materials and thus people with lots of gold but no time are willing to pay a premium for them. This is especially true for the precursors we are looking at. They require 1000 imperial favors each as well as 50 spirit shards. Let's take a look at how you can obtain these efficiently and, if you don't have a stockpile of the materials, how you can farm for the rest of them as well. That way, you can start making and selling precursors regardless of your current situation. First things first, crafting a precursor will require you having the relevant crafting profession level to the max level. If this is something you haven't done yet, don't do them all at once. Pick one to max out first and reinvest the profit from your initial precursors in maxing out the other professions. You'll want to use GW2 crafts to level all of your crafting professions by the way. They give you either a cheap or a fast option to max them out. And if you're really broke and you don't have enough gold to level one of the professions, check out the playlist with my solo farms that I've been posting over the past week. An hour and a half of those and you're good to go. All of the generation 3 precursor recipes can be bought from Levas in either Saitung province or in Arborstone. They'll cost you some tales of adventure and some karma. At their current price, the tails cost less than 2 gold for 10, so if you don't have them stockpiled, it's actually faster to buy them than to farm them. So that's the obligatory disclaimer out of the way, now let's get to the actual crafting. Much like any legendary item, the generation 3 precursors will require 4 components each. I'm going to use Dragon's Rending, the axe precursor, as an example in this video. Every precursor will be slightly different, but the principles will remain the same. To craft the Axe Precursor, we'll need to come up with an Axe Head, Haft, Transcendent Crystal and Memories of Aurin. These last make up the brunt of the cost for your Precursor. A hundred of those will cost a little over 40 gold, but the good news is that you can farm them by defeating Subon in Dragon's End, Kralkatoric in Dragonfall, by doing Dragonstorm, as well as from quite a few of the story steps. All of the metas I mentioned are incredibly rewarding and Dragon's End will also reward you with some of the other components you'll need. So if possible, I'd advise you to do at least Dragon's End and Dragonstorm on a daily basis. Since we started working backwards on the components list, let's check out the Transcendent Crystal next. The Globs of Ectoplasm and Amalgamated Gemstones will be readily available if you complete a few meta events. And in the worst case scenario, you could choose to buy them from the trading post. This component features two items why players are willing to pay a premium for the precursors. But you won't have to worry about them as much if you follow my advice. The Eldritch Crawl will cost you 50 spirit shards, which you can obtain by gaining experience past level 80. You literally won't have to care about those if you simply play the game. The 100 Hydrocatalytic Reagents will cost you 500 research nodes. If you struggle with these, check out my guide on how you can get these rather painlessly. That brings us to our final two components, and the ones that will require the most of your time spent farming. For those, you'll either need 20 chunks of pure jade and 20 chunks of petrified echovalt resin, or 40 of one of them. You can gather 60 chunks of pure jade per day in Dragon's End, and the resin can be farmed from the trees in Echovalt Forest. Ticket has made a route for those in Blishut, by the way, so feel free to check that out. 
Each of the final two components also requires a blessing of the Jade Empress, so you'll need two of them for your precursor, and each of them costs 500 Imperial Favor. I've been showing footage of the end of Dragon's meta events in the background, because that's how you can get a lot of them in a rather short time frame. If you don't have the time to complete a full meta or you want to get more of them per day, there's a few more things you can do solo. There are two repeatable hero points in Saitung Province and in New Kaideng, as well as one in Arborstone. You can repeat those once per day for some very quick favors. And even if you don't need favors right now, I would advise you to still do the hero points on a daily basis. They will only take a couple of seconds each and they give quite a bit of experience and some imperial favor. The other thing you can do will feature the renowned hard vendors in each of the zones. All of them will sell you one writ of each specific zone for 1050 karma, and each writ can be consumed for 5 more imperial favor. Additionally, they'll also sell you 5 writs of the current zone for one of each of the other zones. So you'll be spending 3 writs to gain 5, or in simpler terms, you'll be gaining 10 favors. Never trade 1 writ for 10 imperial favor, by the way, that's a net 5 favor loss. I won't blame you for not wanting to redo every of the hearts in every single zone though. But I have some good news. There are no hearts to complete in Dragon's End, but there's still a vendor there that offers you the same deal. So that's the vendor you want to visit every day. Finally, there's one more way. The Jade Sliver Recycler for your Jade Bot. Every junk item that drops will be converted into slivers, which you can spend on different account bound currencies, among which the writs that will grant you favor. You'll need 50 slivers for one writ, which comes down to 10 slivers per imperial favor gained. While getting your imperial favors will be the most time-consuming task of crafting precursors, they will be the reason why you will always get to sell them at a premium. This might be a hassle to some, especially if they have enough gold and not enough time. But to the rest of us, this is an opportunity to keep making gold, even in the future. The final two ingredients for your axe head and haft, or whatever two components you're crafting for your precursor, will require ascended crafting materials. The axe blade requires three Deldrimor steel ingots and the haft two spirit wood planks, as well as five piles of crystalline dust and 50 thermocatalytic reagents each. These last ones you'll have to buy from a merchant and will cost you just under one and a half gold for 100 of them. The piles of crystalline dust can be salvaged from globs of ectoplasm, or you can farm for them by killing branded enemies in the Jahai Bluffs. I made a video about those, which I'll link in a pinned comment as well. Finally, the ascended ingredients can be either bought on the trading post or crafted once per day. How you go about getting these depends on your current situation. If you can, I would advise you to craft the 4 ectoplasm refinement items each day. This will guarantee you build a stockpile of them for when you actually need them, or will make you some extra cash on the side. If you literally have every other item except for these ascended materials, you can choose to buy them from the trading post instead. Once again, if you're short on gold, check out my materials farming series linked in the pinned comment. One or two hours of farming these will set you up to buy any of the materials you're still missing. The last thing you'll have to do is the actual crafting and selling the precursor on the trading post. I decided to go over every single ingredient so that you know what to do if crafting these things is new to you. This might make the whole process seem a little more daunting than it really is. Once you've done this once or twice, you'll notice that all you need to really worry about is coming up with 1000 imperial favors, 50 spirit shards and 500 research nodes. All of the other ingredients will take care of themselves along the way. If you have any other comments or questions, feel free to ask them down below and make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons if you want to help me out.